good news, everyone. All right, I'm not going to do that throughout the episode. Yeah. <laughs> but we're here to talk about Futurama's return. Yes. Futurama came back to Hulu, renewed for a season of just 10 simple episodes. Yep. And uh, thanks to John DiMaggio, all the cast got back together. Yeah. They all got good pay. Yep. And we watched it. We waited until the whole thing was done. We just finished the 10th episode. And uh, yeah, that was we're, a thing. We're doing a... <laughs> our commentary on it, I guess. Yeah. Um, for this one, so I know growing up and like uh, from the time we were younger until now, Futurama was really the cartoon that I enjoyed, that I watched. Mm -hmm. And then you said that you'd watched a few episodes here and there, but like yeah. it, it wasn't really. I was never a big Matt Groening guy. After like yeah. a relationship with you, I've grown to like Matt Groening's work. But in the past, I was just like, neat. Yeah, whereas I absolutely love Matt Groening. Mm -hmm. um, I think out of all of the like adult cartoon uh, writers, animators, producers, like the shows, um, he's definitely my favorite because of his ability to do like the silly, ridiculous things. Mm -hmm. But then like there's just an episode that just tugs at your heartstrings. Like I can't even tell you how many moments in Futurama that I just sobbed. Right. Like, because it just hits you right in the feels. And, um, you know, The Simpsons does the same thing. Like, whenever Homer gets stuck at the plant forever and then he, like, takes that sign that he has where it, it's saying that he's going to be there forever. Mm -hmm. And he changes it and puts, like, all these pictures of Maggie over it and says, like, do it for her. And you just, like, ah! you know, it's, it's The Simpsons. Like, yeah. it's not... A crazy you know emotional cartoon or anything and Futurama is the same way where it's not a super emotional cartoon but it has those moments where you're just like oh you know <laughs> oh no um which is my main point with the return that I wanted to talk about um with the newest season of the the 10 episodes that we just watched mm -hmm. I was so excited because Futurama is my favorite adult cartoon. Mm -hmm. And I was really hoping for like that same quality of like nerd meets adult humor meets um, <laughs> Wesky's tapping around. So if you hear his little claws tapping. Um, but like all of these things meets that like feel good moment. And it wasn't there no. in these 10 episodes. Like, no. um, like, it almost felt like Matt Groening wasn't involved. Hmm. Like, his name is on it, but it didn't have that unique quality of, like, all of the nerdy, um, like, references mm -hmm. and and the, the quote-unquote smart jokes mixed in with the adult humor, mixed in with the silliness. Like, it just, it wasn't there for me. It was very, like, trending humor. Yeah. Hey, what's and, going on recently? And oh, it was we got a very... poker jail poke a jab at covid yeah. we got a poke a jab at uh, alexa like, yeah and uh dune's popular right now yeah so they just like it felt like family guy yeah in a way where they're like the unique qualities that that specific cartoon had mm -hmm. wasn't in the the new season it's like there were no like feel good moments i it's almost like they tried to do it with one of the last episodes with like the simulation mm -hmm. and Bender being like, oh, you know, I like, I'm just a thing, you know? Yeah. And him feeling for the simulators. But it just wasn't the same. It wasn't the same yeah. as like. There was no Sting episode. There was no yeah. episode when Fry goes back home and. Yeah, connects where with his it's mother. like there's the, the emotional episodes of even like Fry's relationship with Leela. Like they're. Mm -hmm. You know, they're supposed to be, like, almost a layer of hurt there. Mm -hmm. And the one episode they did that, like, challenged that relationship wasn't even an episode about it. Like, they cut in all of these, like, ridiculous commercials. Yeah. Which they've done previously. Like, that's not a new concept for the cartoon. Mm -hmm. They have done that before. But this one, it was, like... I feel like someone had an idea like, oh, let's have Leela fall in love with a space prince. And then they're like, okay, let's let's flush that out. And they're like, well, I don't have any other ideas. And they're like, okay, well, we're on a time crunch, so let's just <laughs> put some stuff in there. Hey, we um, promised 10 episodes. God damn yeah. it, we're going to give you 10 episodes. 
Now, whether they're good or not, <laughs> eh, it doesn't really matter. We're going to give you 10. So it just... It felt phoned in. Yeah. Um, like everything was politics. Everything was like family guy. <laughs> like that's all I can think of. Like it just, it missed the mark with the special quality that made Futurama Futurama. Yeah. And um, like while it did have a lot of funny moments and things that like I did chuckle aloud at, mm -hmm. it wasn't Futurama for me. I got you. Because, like, I still laugh at American Dad. I still laugh at Family Guy. But it's it's not the same mm -hmm. feeling, I guess. Yeah. You know, if I just want to turn my brain off and not think about anything, yeah, I'm going to put on Family Guy because I don't have to think. Yeah. Um, but Futurama, like, I wanted to feel something. Yeah. I wanted to think. <laughs> I yeah. wanted to feel. And I got neither. Yeah. Um, I think the... Like, I'm trying to remember all of the episodes and i i think like fight it was it like fight against the vaccine or something rage against the Ra vaccine rage against the vaccine i think that was my favorite episode that was one of the stronger ones yes um mainly because it had some of the cheekiness mm -hmm. that futurama is known for is known for mm -hmm. um but it's still just kind of like Meh. Yeah, it was kind of like, yeah, they're obviously going to make this joke, and they're obviously going to yeah. do this. And... Like, it was very expected. Um... It's weird, though, because you think of Futurama, and it's a show that takes place years into the future. Yeah. Like, the joke is, like, Fry's been cryogenically frozen mm -hmm. enough to where, like, the city was destroyed, rebuilt, and the aliens oh, yeah. destroyed it again. Over and over. Yeah. So it's weird that this entire season was about stuff trending now... When yeah. that would be obsolete hundreds of years from now. It's like, I guess the big... It's trying to play catch up and it's what a lot of adult shows yeah. do that they need to just stop. And I think What's that, trending now? I think the reason that Rage Against the Vaccine was my favorite episode is because they were like, Oh, we finally are out of a pandemic. <laughs> like, it's been a thousand years. Like, um, because that is relatable right now. People are like, oh my god, this is still happening. Like, this is still a thing. And... Um, I feel like that's relatable, mm. but a lot of the other jokes, like we're still going through it right now. So I don't think it has had time to simmer for mm -hmm. it to be funny. Like this was definitely more of like a satirical political statement yeah. rather than. I just like, think it falls into the trap of so fiction. many other like modern reboots and stuff. It's yeah. just like what's trending on the writing floor yeah. is not going to be trending when it airs. Yeah. So already it's just like, oh, one of these jokes. Only heard a thousand of them. Yeah. Well, let's let's try it again. Um, but definitely I, I feel like watching it was more of a chore than an enjoyment. Yeah. You totally. know, where it was like, oh man, like the new episode came out, we should watch it. And then we just didn't watch it for like a month. And then I was like, ah, oh, maybe if we just binge these last four episodes, we can, you know, review it and get it out of the way. Yeah. And, and before, it's like, like one of them left an impression. Yeah. And it's like, that is so sad to me that it's like, you know, the original is my favorite cartoon, my favorite adult cartoon. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, like, let's, let's, let's wrap it up. You know, this is why I'm a fan of endings. When things yeah. end, just let it end. And I'm completely okay with that. I would have been fine with Futurama ending the way it did mm -hmm. because it, like, it did leave it open, but it also wrapped it up just fine. Yeah. Like, of them being like, well, are you ready to do it again? Back. Why? I'm like, ugh. I don't want it to happen because even like King of the Hill, Brittany Murphy is dead. Well, so is the voice of Dale now. Yeah. Like there's, there's just, it would not be the same. No. And too much time has passed. Yeah. That like, is a I can't, product of its time. I can't imagine like Hank having an Alexa and an iPhone and oh, like God. a smart car. Like it just. Making jokes about streaming. Yeah. I just like, it's not, it's not it's good. It's not why um, I go to the show. I can see a lot of people liking these reboots that weren't from the generation when these came out because our generation mm -hmm. we're so nostalgic over things so of course like we're gonna watch king of the hill and be like oh i remember doing that when i was a kid or like oh i remember like you know my dad giving me five dollars to go to the movie like mm -hmm. um whereas now like the generation watching these now 
that's not their vibe. Like, they're not as nostalgic as, right. you know, Gen X and, and millennials. Absolutely. Like, I get that. So, yeah, they're more politically driven. They're more, what's trendy? Mm-hmm. You know, look at TikTok. Like, yeah, what's, what's trending? Trendy? And, On to the next thing. Um, so, like, I feel these reboots aren't for the original fans. They're for the new generation. But I think that it should end. Like, yeah. you know... These cartoons aren't meant for the new age. They're mm-hmm. just not like. Well, I mean, they have their own cartoons. Like, yeah. there's thousands of adult shows that are just. I see previews up the wazoo. Yeah, like, there's and I'm this just new like, oh, one, God. Crapopolis, and I'm just like, cool, that's for the new people. Have yeah, fun. like, I'm not watching that. Solar but Opposites, trash. Rick and Morty, and. Um, have at it. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> but it's like they all fall into that same thing of like I don't know if the writers just reached their limit of knowledge, <laughs> and they're just like, oh shit, I don't know any more science terms. Like, let's make it about politics. Like, maybe. You know, there there was very few, if any, of those references in the new season of Futurama of science. Mm, like, okay. the professor still really only used, like, the smellinator. There was no new inventions. Mm-hmm. There was, like, well, no, he... he made the Q-tip for the vaccine. Yeah. Um, that, and then, like, for the, the virus, um, simulator. the shot for the vaccine, sorry. But it's like his character just felt... Phoned it. Like all of their characters felt phoned. Thank in. you. It wasn't just the professor. All of the characters. No, all were of just the characters felt doing their in. bit. Um, but it's again, Fry and Leela do not develop. They just kind yeah. of stay stagnant. All of them do. Like none of them do anything. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, it was frustrating to watch that. And I'm like, these these are like a photocopy of the characters that we grew up really loving. Mm-hmm. So I would say overall for me, it was a little bit disappointing. Um, I'd take it to the shelter. Yeah, I would take it to the shelter. <laughs> it wasn't even worth a watch. Um, but <laughs> I was like, eh, kind the, the good thing that I like about this, um, I love the fight that John Maggio had and, mm-hmm. you know, the ability that he got fair pay for these actors. And He probably read the script and was just like, if I'm doing this phoned in shit, I want good money for yeah. it. <laughs> well, not only that, because they were like, okay, we'll pay you more. And he, he was like, you know, what about all of them? Like, you know, he fought for mm-hmm. the voice actors. Yes. You know, he fought for the community of voice actors. Yep. I feel like he started a discussion about the unfair, like, hiring of voice actors just because you're not seen like your face isn't on the screen doesn't Mm -hmm. mean that you should be treated any less than someone who is seen on the screen like you know people know him for his characters Mm -hmm. they like some of his characters are the most beloved characters in their cartoons respectively and yeah like people know that so why would he get paid less than somebody whose face you get to see on screen you know, and the fact that he was willing to fight for the other actors mm-hmm. as well whenever it came to fair pay and acknowledgments, I just really, really respect that. So I think yeah. that, if anything, this opened up a discussion on voice acting and um, e- equality mm-hmm. whenever it comes to fair pay, fair wages, and fair recognition okay. for voice actors. So. Even if the show was kind of crap. Yeah, like, that doesn't sway my opinion of the show at yeah. all. But that is nice that we've started that discussion. Yeah. So. So, yeah. Puppers, what did you think of Futurama? Were you even aware that Futurama came back and went? Yeah. <laughs> um, and if you did watch it and you loved it, uh, tell me why. Yeah, let us know why. All right, so. Puppers, we'll see you all in the next video. Toodles.